<laughs> I thought we forgot a voice. <laughs> I knew I forgot one. Like, oh, geez. So, okay. So go ahead with what you were saying, Tom. I'm sorry I had to interrupt you, but I, just, I need to get the recorder going. Well, and there's a really cool. Else. <laughs> There's a real cool, cool story that I think I've told before on a past podcast, so you might remember it, Walt, but um, it's a great, to me, example of the difference between being in your head or being in your heart. There is a guy who lived in a Amazon tribe in deep in the Amazon rainforest, and slowly their tribe had been getting exposed to, you know, Western culture, to the to the modern world, you know, and... He was one of the first, I guess, you know, to learn Spanish and then to eventually get out of the rainforest and was went away and went to a college somewhere, went to a university. And so, that, you know, he was going to be able to come back and help the people of his village deal with the modern world. So uh, he was gone for four years and he came back and um, he went out on the usual walk that his family and friends took every day where they walked up the river and they have this wonderful place where they would sit and eat and hang out and you know the butterflies and all this beauty in the middle deep in the middle of the rainforest and he found after he was sitting there with them for a while that he couldn't relate to what the heck they were doing he couldn't relate to what they were experiencing but in his in his memory he sort of could remember he, he definitely could remember that this, he used to experience something incredible here. It used to be this beautiful, beautiful, powerful, wonderful merging experience of him with, with, the, with the rainforest and with his family and friends, and he couldn't feel it any longer. And he attributed that to the Western conditioning of being so head-centered, so mind-centered that you have to do to go away and go to the university and learn all these things. And yet we wonder why our world is today so um, messed up in so many ways. And I think it's because we've gotten so far away from listening to our head and our heart. I mean, listening to our heart and our gut, our heart and our gut, you know, and um, because there is this innate wisdom in us, just like there is in animals. And it really knows how to live in this world in a really harmonious way and to live with each other in a really harmonious way. I'm not saying it's perfect or anything, but I bet I bet it is. I think I think there's a possibility for us to be a whole lot happier, a whole lot simpler and a whole lot more connected to life if we would begin to give our bodies as much listening as we do to our thoughts, you know, and, and begin to turn our thoughts off. I mean, that's what meditation is all about. And it's it's the single biggest thing that I ever hear Abraham talk about anymore you know that in every time that Esther you know channels Abraham it seems like she talks about meditation at some point and the value of it and what is meditation it's getting to the point where our thoughts slow way the heck down and what happens when your thoughts slow way the heck down I've been meditating for 45 years well what happens is you start to feel really really good <laughs> something comes up from inside and you naturally don't feel stress because you're no longer having this fight going on with your head, you know, which is mm -hmm. always looking at things with duality. And, and it's trying so hard. And I'll just tell you one other thing. The, I worked with a shaman from New Mexico for four years, and he, he was a Native American Pueblo Indian. Plus, he was a shaman in Guatemala for 15 years because when he was a hippie, he went down to Guatemala and they grabbed him and made him a shaman. <laughs> you know, after he, <laughs> at, well, he, he trained, he trained with this, this 70, 80 year old man in this village that was high in the mountains in, in um, Guatemala around this beautiful lake. And um, he became the shaman there. But anyway, he said that, um, how was I going to put this? I am, I, it just went right out of my head when I said yeah, <laughs> it. It'll, it, it'll, it'll come back. It'll come back. Well, um, while you're trying to remember what the shaman said, let me get Alex's take on something because, uh, Alex, you were, you were nodding and you are saying yes, yes, yes a lot of the times here, particularly mm -hmm. when he was talking about the mind-body connection. And I think you were referring in your own mind to what goes on when we're dealing with traumas, although you were also responding to the story that he told. What were you thinking about? Tell us what you were thinking about. 
<laughs> I was actually thinking about how um, on a on a sort of a different mindset, but on the same on the same topic, how I listen I listen to my body more than most people because uh-huh. um, situations happen like I get sick a lot for some reason, and I always end up in the hospital. And before I get to the hospital, I already know what's wrong. And I'm always telling my I'm always telling my nurses I'm like listen I think I have this and they're like all right some people think I'm a hypochondriac but by the time I get to the hospital the doctor's like yeah you were right and then I'm like yeah I know because <laughs> uh-huh. I'm in tune with my body I would I trust my gut and I know what's I know what's going on. Well, what raises the question what are you going to the hospital for if you've already got to figure it out what's the point? <laughs> <laughs> well they gotta fix it. <laughs> I know what I the issue is. I need the for. medicine. <laughs> oh, okay. So I, I remembered what the shaman said. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. so strange. Well, you know, it's one of these things that, that it's not something that I, I can wrap my mind around that well, the fact that he said this, but I'm going to bring it out here just because he based his entire teaching on this. He is the first genius genius that I ever met in my life. This man was truly a genius. And he studied uh, the cultures of the world all over the world in in massive, massive way, almost like a super anthropologist kind of a person. And um, he said that every culture that has the verb to be in it um, is related to to the concept of empire, the concept of um, conquest of other people. And uh, that the cultures that don't have the verb to be in them are the more indigenous cultures. And he 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 attributes the verb to be, you know, I am, you are, he is, she is, to the cause of the unrest that we see in our world today. That it's the concept that I am that causes all of the all of the problems that we experience. And um, that could be talked about, of course, for many shows, <laughs> because I, I was in this class for four years with him. I mean, twice a year for 12 days each time, but I could never really wrap my head around what he was saying. But what he was saying was like in a Guatemalan village, indigenous village, there wasn't that there's the cat. It's like when the cat walked through, they, it was something more like that. That animal has catness. And it, there's a way of understanding life where we're no longer in the in the thought of I am, and he is, and she is, and they were, and they will be. There's just this isness going on. There is what is is what's happening, and there isn't this planning, thinking, constantly constructing reality function going on. It's it's more of an experience of life. And, and people, it's like when the guy went out into the rainforest with all the people from his village, and he, he had lost that sense of what they were experiencing there, uh, you know, sitting along the river. And it was because he had gotten so much into this I am mind that he was, he was just locked in his mind. So I'm just throwing that out there. I don't have this answer to all this. I just <laughs> think that it's a fascinating question to be asking you know, um, why has, why have we created the world we have? And I think we've been driven way too much by the mind and not enough by the heart and the gut and the body, but we don't listen to them enough. So I'm now becoming an advocate of, of listening more to the body and mm-hmm. seeing what uh, the heart has to, has to tell me. I agree with uh, listening to the heart and, and the gut and the inside. I, I, I think that's, important to do. Um, I don't quite go as far as the shaman did to say that I am is the cause of, of all human problems because on the other hand, and this is your words you were using, but you know, if, if we're describing what is as what is, is is a being verb. <laughs> it is a verb of beingness. You know, so yeah. you kind of are tripping over your own logic, not you personally, but 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 one is well yeah that's why I... when we when one goes down that path. Yeah. Um, so I, I think you may be a little bit misled on that. I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with, with I am, and I don't think I am necessarily means empire. I can see where he might draw that conclusion, but I don't think it's, it, it's a direct correlation. But yeah. regardless of that part, the more important thing I think is 
if we go inside more, if we go into the heart more and recognize the connectedness, I think you're absolutely right. I love the medical research you cited about the the, the connections and 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 the you know all of, all of the the ways that the heart basically is sending more signals than the brain is, and so on and so forth. Um, that to me shows that we need to have a more continuous and more uh, well connected understanding of ourselves and. Mm -hmm communication within ourselves in order to make the kinds of changes we want to make in our own life. Um, I, one of the things I like about Abraham Hicks is that they make, they make it a very clear point that life is not broken. We are not broken. The, the planet Earth is not broken. Um, and, and I think it's a really vital point because so often we start from the viewpoint that says, you know, everything's failing, everything's falling apart. And it really isn't. I mean, if, if you really scan back and take like, you know, the objective view from outer space and look at what's going on at Earth, it's not falling apart. It's just as beautiful of a planet as it ever was. It's a gorgeous place and it's got all kinds of cool stuff going on. It's full of contrast, but that's one of the reasons we came here. So um, rather than getting wrapped up in that part of it, which I think a lot of people do, including our shaman friend there, rather than getting wrapped up in all the different ways that the, that the world is failing, I think we're actually better off focusing on the ways that, that we're succeeding, on the ways that our life is getting better and mm -hmm. our lives are getting better in many, many different ways. Now, the, the tool, the big tool that we're talking about here is that mind-body connection and the internal connection. When we can master that tool, we improve our lives by leaps and bounds. And mastering that tool, I think, means getting ourselves into the happier place, what we call here the, your daily dose of happy. When we get to that happier place on a regular basis, then life gets better. And it, it will get better in different ways for different people. Everybody's got their own lives to live. Everybody's got their own priorities, their own dreams, their own desires. They're not necessarily the same as what their neighbors are, but it doesn't matter. That's part of the beauty mm -hmm. of living in a world of contrast. Mm -hmm. So I, I'd suggest we need to kind of reshift the way we're starting the conversation. Instead of saying all these things aren't working out well, how about saying what is working well? Because there's an awful lot that's working well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I I definitely agree that uh, that that's that's the thing that we've been missing is realizing there's a. I watched a special last night with Greg Braden um, on Gaia Television, and he was talking about how now science has proved that human emotions um, produce effects which defy conventional laws of physics. And they, they've done a, experiments which prove that emotions like love and appreciation literally change the DNA within us. Um, when, you're in a, when you're in a feeling like anger or, or sadness or fear, emotions like that cause the DNA to go into these tight little little circles, I guess, these tight little coils, mm -hmm. and they, they sort of constricts the DNA. But when you're in emotions like love and appreciation and happiness and clarity, the, the, the DNA then begins to, they said it, they call it, it, it begins to express its full potential. So the it's pretty amazing to think that science has gotten to the point where it's literally conducting experiments to prove the value of human emotion. But it's like everything in Abraham law of attraction language says that emotions have to lead the way. Feelings, feelings do come first. You can think yourself into a better feeling state but that's where the vibration comes from that's going to cause the change to take place. Like if you if you want your body to be healthier, it's it's going to come from a good feeling emotion being in your body. But sometimes you got to think yourself into a better feeling place too. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm feeling that the two things just have to go work so hand in hand. You know, and but but what Alex asked about trauma, you can't you can't also deny the those bad feelings, you know, those things right. we call negative feelings, you know, they, they have to be embraced and loved. And then, and then we begin to see these changes take place that we want to see take place in our life. So, right. Cause otherwise right. you're pushing them down and then you're, and then you're vibrating bad stuff because you're holding on to all that negative energy. Mm -hmm. 
We've all right. all had lots of experience doing that. We're 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 masters at that part. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're really good at that's that. human nature. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, it's also what we've learned is what we've been taught, and we right. we become very, very good at it. You know, mm-hmm. part of what what we deliberate creator types are trying to do is we're kind of trying to unlearn that and learn new skill sets that serve us better. Um, right, that's really the the main goal. Um, you mentioned how that it is a big part of what we're trying to do. We're trying to get deep down into what it is that's that's really going on inside. My words, not your words. Um, can you think of any examples, either one of you, uh, from your own lives where you, you went deep, um, maybe something bubbled up to the surface that caused you to go deep, you went deep, you found something, and it led to an illumination of some kind. It led to some kind of a breakthrough that really made a difference. Because mm-hmm. I think that when we look at the experiences of our lives that way, that's when we begin to get a feel for how this process can replay itself over and over again and get us into a better and better place every time that it happens so that we don't have to be afraid of these negative feelings. We can actually embrace them and figure out how to, uh, to you know, find the positive side and turn them into our favor instead of being afraid of them or trying to push them down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you have a story, Alex? I do. Um, recently, well, yesterday, actually, I was, a, I was in therapy and we were talking about, um, uh, we were talking about past traumas, which is why I brought up the subject. And we figured out that part of the reason why uh, why I have agoraphobia today is because of part of my mind wants to protect, you know, the the fear that I have for, for certain things. So part of that comes from when I was a kid, we went to the circus and I was definitely afraid of clowns and balloons. Oh. So oh. I was like, no, no, I don't like it. And my mother was like, no, we're going home. So I have that instilled in me. If I don't like it, I'm going home. Ah, mm-hmm. So that's, that's yeah. part of where the agoraphobia comes, comes from. That's, that's what's bubbling to the surface now that I'm thinking of it. Oh, so when you, so, so, wow. so when you don't like things out in the world, you have this feeling go to go home. home. Yeah. yeah. And once you're home, then everything's fine. Yeah, I'm in my safe space. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. I have mm-hmm. some of that too because I definitely spend a lot of time in my space, you know, and I'm always happy when I'm in my space. Right. Um, <laughs> it can be up in the mountains somewhere, but but I definitely have, I was just recounting the other day how many hours I spend in my in my house working on things, you know, and it's huge amount of hours, you know, and mm-hmm. th- theoretically I could have other aspects going on more out in the world, but I don't. Mm -hmm. I have a story um, about that, exactly what you were asking, is because I, you know, and I probably told this story on another podcast, but I've I've been in this relationship on and off for the last year, and at a certain point, you know, and I I kept going through, you know, leaving this woman, and then we'd get back together, and I'd just kind of leave her again, and and it never felt like the really the right relationship for me. And finally, I was... um, I was up in the mountains one day sitting along this beautiful creek and I had this realization that I had to really let go of this relationship because it just, there was just too many things about it that weren't working yet. It had so many beautiful aspects that when I thought about leaving the beautiful things about the relationship, I I literally experienced a broken heart. And this Mm -hmm. was, I could say to myself, this is the first time in my life, I really know now what a broken heart is. You know, I said, this is what it feels like. I never felt that before. And I always was jealous of people that got to have a broken heart. And of course, <laughs> oh, really? Well, because, because I thought, him? well, I thought, I thought, well, at least they can feel, you know, I mean, a lot, oh, of, yeah. a okay. lot of white, white male, uh, white males can't feel. That's why you have Congress. You know, that's why you have, you know, <laughs> The president, you know, the, the way the way this oh world God. is, is because of, of white males being so out of touch with feelings. You know, they they're it. really into their minds. And then, really, I swear to God, it's true. And so I was able to feel this this heartbreak. But after a while, I said, "This is horrible." You know, I I can't stand this. This feels so bad. You know, because mm-hmm. I'm going to be leaving this beautiful aspects of this woman that I love so much, the qualities that we share. 
But I have to because I can't reconcile the things that don't work. So I went home and I'm driving home with this horrible heartache. And I thought, God, this is intense. You know, how do people deal Mm -hmm. with heart heartache? And I got home and I'm, I'm laying on the couch and, um, the heartbreak is just getting off the charts. It's horrible. And so finally I said this thing that has happened to me before in my life when things get so bad that I don't know what to do. I said, look, I give it to you. So I gave it to my higher power. You know, whatever, whoever you are, whoever it is, that's this force that makes life what it is. I just give up. I, I can't stand this. You take it over. And, and, and once I did that, I actually did some tapping, you know, that, that EFT yeah. t- tapping. Mm-hmm. And and it changed so dramatically that, and I wasn't going to go see my girlfriend that day because I was just so torn apart. But after I gave it up and I did some tapping, I called her up and we decided we'd get together. And I went over and spent the evening with her. And it was one of the most beautiful evenings we'd ever spent and I, I had let go of so much of my angst about that relationship that I could experience her on a completely different level. I could, I could experience, and she said to me, she says, God, what happened to you? And I said, well, I decided to give up our relationship and it broke my heart so much that now I'm really happy. You know, it was like, <laughs> it's like I changed. And, yeah. and so that's what happens when we, when we feel deep, deeply, you know, and we go mm-hmm. through the feeling instead of, you know, I could have isolated and just said, no, you know, I'm just, or I don't know. I'm just so grateful that I had that breakthrough, you know, because it happened on a body level. It was like I literally changed from the inside out. It wasn't, I didn't use my head to do it. So right. it pretty, well, pretty, pretty I, I guess white men can feel then. That's pretty cool. <laughs> well, yeah, well, I'm, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to lead the way. I'm, I'm trying to be an example of a, of a guy, a white guy who actually feels something. But no, there's plenty of men who feel, you know, white guys that feel a lot. Um, but uh, I think it is one of the biggest problems in the world today uh, is that we've been so programmed we out of our be, feelings. Huh? Does this mean we can expect to see you ca- campaigning for Congress in 2020 now that, you know, you, 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 you so now you're going to ha- reintroduce yeah. uh, feeling white men into Congress? I'm starting a new party. It's called the, the, the heart party. The heart it's party. Be, it's going to be people who come more from the heart and less from the head. Yeah. There you they, go. They, they have more caring. They have more caring about about others and others' feelings than they do about getting their way and getting a bunch of money and, not that money's bad, but sometimes, sometimes the one-pointed focus of the uh, of that American male focus of just I, you got to get my stuff. You know, the guy that has the most toys wins. You know, right, <laughs> who dies, right. the guy who dies with the most money is the is the guy who wins, and that's a very powerful thing in our culture is the belief in in um, having things. And very stupid because you can't take it with you. You can't, but boy, <laughs> we we sure think it it matters a lot. You know, right. it's it's our sense of self worth is tied mm-hmm. up in how much we actually have, and how yeah. much is in the bank, and how much we die with, and how much money we leave to other people. And there's a lot of good in that, but there's also just a lot of um, stress. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. A lot of striving and a lot of stepping on other people to make sure you have what you want, you know? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's very cool. The, the, the funny thing is that we have um, that strong tendency that goes on, right, of what, what you're calling the, the, the non-feeling white male, which I think is a, <laughs> it's a very funny stereotype. I'm, I'm not sure if it's, if it's true, but it certainly has enough truth that it, it sounds like a good stereotype anyway. But, yeah. <laughs> it's just another stereotype, I'm sure. <laughs> it's just another stereotype, yeah. But it's it, it kind of funny how often that happens, and and I've I've kind of felt for a long time. I mean, there were there have been many times throughout my life where I wasn't really in good connection inside. I, I had blocked a lot of it, but there's also been a lot of time where I have been in connection, and I, I I always kind of resisted the idea of of men being disconnected from their feelings. I would read it in a book or something like that, and I'd say, "What are you talking about? I'm feeling stuff all the time," mm-hmm. but. What I realized over time is, and I think this is really true for anyone, not just men, not just white, anybody, um, 
we all have periods of time where we disconnect or seemingly disconnect. We have, we never mm -hmm. actually disconnect. It's really impossible to disconnect, but we kind of block it off. We just say, I'm not going to look at that part. And there are other times where, you know, we were going with the flow or loving it and so forth. And, and those who seemingly disconnect more often will tend to have problems with it more often. Those who seemingly disconnect less often will have problems less often. It's just, you know, there's like a continuity there that I think applies throughout the human race. And it, it shows up in a lot of different ways. Um, I would even suggest that it shows up among the indigenous peoples of the world, not in the ways that it does in the West, but mm -hmm. in other ways. I mean, I, I, that's part of the human experience of, of being in the contrast, as we call it, dealing with stuff that goes on in life that we don't like. When you when you deal with stuff that you don't like, show me one person who is always able to stay open and positive about, and I'll show you a person that I've never heard of before. <laughs> <laughs> that's just not the way people are. People, you know, other people make mistakes, they try, they practice, they lose, they win. You know. It, it, that's why we're spending so much time in this contrast. That's why we love mm -hmm. being here so much because we're doing so much growing. We're doing so much experiencing. And, you know, the better we get at it, the better we get at it. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think there's anybody accepted. I mean, maybe there is. Maybe there are people out there who just totally live always in the positive and they're never brought down by anything that's going on. Mm -hmm. But I'd like to meet them. I mean, I, I've even seen the Dalai Lama and he's a pretty darn positive guy. You know, the, yeah. the, you watch any of his videos, he's very, very positive. And yet you can also tell there are certain little things that rub him the wrong way. And mm -hmm. he doesn't spend a lot of time on them, but you can tell they're there. Well, that means that there's going to be certain degrees of disconnection. Is that bad? No, that's part of being human. <laughs> it just means mm -hmm. that, you know, that's where that's stuff that he's working on. And that's good for him, you know? Right. That's the way I see it anyway. Mm-hmm. I just so, know I love, I love being around... Um simple people um you know like i i've had a goal for a long time to want to go to hang out say in a village in ecuador or a village mm -hmm. in colombia or so, somewhere you know like a, a little place in mexico maybe where where people live closer to the land they're they're closer to um they're closer to family maybe they're closer to um to dance maybe they're closer to music Maybe they're closer to growing food. Um, maybe they're closer to being out in in, in nature more. Um, just that there's a certain simplicity that I, I guess, coming from such a uh, complicated culture as we live in in the United States, I, I there's part of me that longs for uh, the simplicity of living closer to to the earth at least, you know, and closer to, to family and friends. Um, just that whole idea like i lived i lived in ashrams around the country for 10 years you know in it was in major cities but it was always with a group of of between five and and 30 other people living in the same facility the same house uh sometimes a great big house obviously if it was 30 <laughs> people that they were pretty big houses but um but there's something so beautiful about just being um, connected to family and friends in a in a really constant organic way you're interacting with people a lot I just like I just like that simplicity you know and mm -hmm. so I was thinking about I was thinking about the phrase that uh, uh, you were talking about Alex you, you mentioned your your agoraphobia and how what you realized in your breakthrough was that you when you, when you were experiencing that what you were really experiencing was the desire to be home the desire to go mm -hmm. home, the safety of home, the security of home. Home is where, right. you, where you would feel good. And I, I, I like to turn things around when I hear a phrase expressed in the negative. And mm -hmm. agoraphobia to me is a phrase that's expressed in the negative. I'm afraid of the marketplace, right? And so mm -hmm. I'm asking myself, and I don't know ancient Greek enough to answer this question, but I'm asking myself, <laughs> what's, what's the reverse phrase that means I love being at home? There's got to be a Greek phrase from that from ancient mm. Greek. You know, that means I love being at home because that's a much more positive way of saying it yeah. than saying, I just, I'm so fearful of being out in public spaces, mm -hmm. you know? And when we look at it more positively, I think that's where we make that connection again. That's what you were yeah. trying to do with therapy. You were trying to reconnect. You were trying right. to you know, piece together the part that, that you were kind of blocking off and so forth. Well, I'm sure that's a big part of what you and your therapist are working on is focusing on the stuff that you love about being at home. 
and, and getting into that vibration, so to speak. Well, why don't we make that the condition? Yeah. <laughs> why, is it, why does it have to be a negative condition? Why can't it be a positive condition? That's what I, that's well, the that's why I, I just say. I just tell people I'm a homebody. You're a homebody. Well, that, yeah, that's yeah. the American version. I like that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it may not be ancient Greek, but that's okay. It's good. It's got yeah. good etymology. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Now, there's also a secondary question that goes along with this in my mind, and this is one that uh, Joel and El Elston and I talk about a lot. Joel, in fact, will post on his Facebook timeline a lot of memes that, that say something to, to the effect of, look for when you're in your comfort zone and then crawl out of it. And what mm -hmm. he means is you don't do your growing until you get out of the comfort zone. So yep. not only is there a great positive in being in the comfort zone, but there's also the positive of crawling out of it. And that's another thing I don't have a good phrase for, a good a good word, you know, mm -hmm. something as powerful as agoraphobia, but expressed more positively. Right, but, right. Yeah, and that's got to be part of what you're doing therapeutically, too, because you're, you're trying yeah. to bring yourself home so you can be more centered, centered and more grounded, but you're also trying to find a way to make yourself go out so that you're feeling mm -hmm. good about it, so that it's a positive yeah. experience for you. Exactly. I mean, that, that's, that's got to be a key portion of what you're doing, right? Yes, that's exactly what we're doing. It's called exposure therapy. Exposure therapy, okay, yeah, mm -hmm. and it, and I take it it's working. Uh, <laughs> it's it. There's some days. There's some days where it's working, and then and then I yeah. remember I take. I feel like I take one step forward, two steps back, but um, mm -hmm. that happens. Yeah, it's there. <laughs> See, the way I look at it is, where were you before? Before you were taking no steps forward. Right. That's true. You know, so one step forward is an improvement. <laughs> right, exactly. And you stick with it long enough, you get the two steps forward and only one step back, and all of a sudden you're making progress. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it's one step at a time. But that, yep. that's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of, of, of digging in to what's going on inside. And mm -hmm. I, I applaud you. I, I'm not sure how you guys, you and your therapist, came to the conclusion about what you were doing. Um, where your fears were concerned about being out in public spaces. But you had to be digging into stuff internally to do that. And that kind of ties back to what Tom was talking about. Although, uh, Tom, I think you tend to talk about it more and probably rightfully so. It's not so much digging into it, it's, it's seeing what's bubbling up and then kind of interacting with it. Am I reading that wrong? Um, yeah, I think it is seeing what's bubbling up, but sometimes it's, um, it's just the raw emotion that's there because of an event that's happened. Um, mm -hmm. is if that's what you're yeah. saying, but uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, and you know, it's also just a feeling in the body. Um, it, it's amazing how much you know. Like, let's say you get a just a pain in the neck, or you get a, um, you know, your your knees really bothering you. It, all mm -hmm. of these things are telling us something. You know, they're they are energy moving in the body, and you know, I don't know if you've read Louise Hay has written a book about life uh, what's that book called i can't remember but anyway she, in it she lists how each part of the body has a message for us you know that it could, so when we have a pain in the neck you know she she goes so far as to extrapolate well a pain in the neck could mean that you're unwilling to to see in all directions you know you're you're unwilling oh. to mm. to like be able to yeah see in all directions and a pain in your knee might mean that you're you can't be flexible and moving forward you know mm. um, i know i sprained my ankle three times over a, a three-year period and i when i look up what the ankle was about in her book she says it's about the ability to want to move forward with your life too and i was really experiencing that during those three years i was feeling incredibly stuck and unable to move forward and kept spraining my ankle so i'd be i'd be out of commission for six months each time i couldn't dance i couldn't go hiking um and it it was showing me really clearly that wow i've got a it's showing up in my body the, the very thing that's going on in my consciousness is showing up in my body the body seems to be the last place sometimes but it's also sometimes the first place that things show up so yeah. we can get really good at listening to our bodies. We can get really, really good at, at reading the signs of of what our what our feelings inside of us are telling us about where we're at, and we can respond. So I think to me, this whole podcast today, it, if I could sum it up, it's about how do you have a relationship with what's going on in your head, with what's going on in your heart, and what's going on in your gut, what's going on in your whole body, 
and and create more of a balance between it all to where you know we're we're able to be as much listening to a sensation in our body or a feeling that's bubbling up inside of us as we are to thoughts we're having about you know our life because i know i know i tend to like think about it more than i do just feel and so i'm spending time every day now making sure that i not only meditate but i'm also doing these guided meditations that are on mp3s that take me into my body so that i can feel what's going on and mm -hmm. using being in our breath is a wonderful way to feel what's going on in our body we just follow our breath and the breath will literally guide us to what needs to be worked with what needs to be addressed if we're just being simple and being listening to our breath and being in that meditative state anyway that was a mouthful but <laughs> You asked me a question, and I'm good. <laughs> You're like Joel in that sense. All I have to do is just say one thing, and he's gone for 30 minutes. And that just kind of uh, yeah, he, he loves to hear himself talk. Um, he's, well, he's got a lot to say. So, you know, it's, it's not like it's wasted time. It's always good stuff coming out. It just makes my job really easy as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel so sorry for you when you're just doing all the talking. And I said, I got to help out Walt. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I do all these shows every weekend. And uh, it's it's good to have co-hosts who jump right in because I just love that. It makes, it makes my job a whole lot easier. So thank you for that. I appreciate that very much. <laughs> it must. Well, I was was thinking today that if we brought this topic to you of how do you balance the head and the heart and the gut and the body I said you must have so much to say because you're constantly listening to all your all these co-hosts all week long and mm -hmm. you're doing this week after week after week I would think you're becoming like this like Socrates or somebody you know you're you're just like <laughs> becoming like Plato you know you you you're hearing everything and you're taking it all in so you must be just becoming absorbing wise. all the information. Yeah, he must be. Yeah. you must be becoming wise beyond beyond your years. Well, I'm not sure if I'm Socrates or if I'm more like the Library of Alexandria, because I'm <laughs> I'm more like absorbing all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Not necessarily being able to do it all. Right. But, <laughs> but uh, you know, I think you're right. Um, I mean, I, I like to make the joke often that I'm the best coach person in America because I have all these life coaches that I do these podcasts with. Um, but mm -hmm. it, it also is, it's a challenge for me because everybody, you know how this is, everybody has their own way of expressing things, their own way of thinking of things. You guys pretty much all talk about the same stuff, but you come at it from completely different perspectives. And so mm -hmm. for me, that's always the challenge, keeping up with the different perspectives and meeting them where they're at, meeting that perspective where that person's perspective is at. And, mm -hmm. and that's. It, it, it involves different wording. It involves different concepts. Um, the concepts and wording are often overlapping, but sometimes the wording can actually be different uh, mm -hmm. in the sense that it's the same words with different meanings associated yeah, with them. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Cindy and I, Cindy Chavez and I, have really been experiencing that uh, with our exploration of Neville Goddard. Um, mm -hmm. Not so much that I have any trouble with Cindy. Actually, Cindy and I, I, I have no problem understanding any of her words, uh, but when we're looking at Neville Goddard, who is a great teacher, a lot of his wording just, I, I, I get thrown for a loop. Like, what yeah. on earth does that mean? Because so much of it is, is uh, scripturally based, and that's always a big turnoff for me anyway. So my brain starts to turn off as soon, as soon as I start to hear the scriptures. And then Cindy has to remind me, no, wait a minute, he uses these words differently. It's a different meaning from what you're used to hearing a, a preacher talk about. Oh, yeah, okay. So go back and, yeah. and re rehear it again and so forth. Mm, that, yeah. That's the skill that you develop when you're doing a podcast like this. You learn to to decode. You put on your decoder ring with everybody you're talking to and saying, mm -hmm. okay. When I'm, when I'm hearing the Tom message, what is the Tom message saying to me? When I'm hearing the Joel message, what's the Joel message saying to me? When I'm hearing the Alex message, what is the Alex message saying to me? And mm. when you do it in, in that perspective, in that context, so to speak, that's when you start to learn. That's when you become more than the Library of Alexandria. <laughs> that's an ongoing process. I, I, I can't say that I have, I, I've made a lot of personal progress. I've certainly grown a lot. I've. <laughs> I've, I, I can say that the best example of how much I have grown is when I was in my teens and 20s and early 30s, I was one of the quietest people you've ever met. And here mm -hmm. I am talking and talking and talking and talking. That shows how much growth I've gone through over the years. Wow. And a lot of that right. is due to what's happened in the last few years with the podcast. 
Mm. Um, so, so there's a, a direct piece of evidence you can look at, but a lot of it is just internal. A lot of it is just, and, and I'm still sorting it out. You mm -hmm. know, you, you guys all give me this, this input and I'm sorting it out. And, and I think that's what happens with our listeners. I think that's why the podcast is gaining listenership because there's so much cool information coming. It almost comes so fast. You have to take time to process it. And then all of a sudden there's more information coming and you can get it. It's almost like having Asperger's. It's got all this, this stuff coming in. You're trying to filter it. Like, wait, wait, wait slow down. Sensory overload. Right. Well, that's so. the beauty of, to me, the beauty of the human mind is that it can, it can handle all these concepts, you know, this multitude of, of input, and then it can actually turn it then around and, and give output also. And I, I would love to more and more just understand how that works with the gut, how that works with the heart, how that works with the body and the mind. It's like it's one organism. And the beauty of it is that, you know, sometimes the body is thought of as like the thing that just carries around the sense of i -ness, you know. This is from here on up is the sense of I, but from here on down is the meal that carries the, the eye, you know, it's yeah. like, mm. and, and I think it's, it's time to really integrate the whole thing and see it as this magnificent organism that all of it is a learning, teaching, um, experiential organism. Mm -hmm. And, and I like that, 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 that's what, that's what we're doing, you know, and I like, like the fact that Abraham always says words don't teach. You know, direct experience is the only thing that really teaches. So, boy, is that true? I mean, even with all the stuff that I learn, I I continue to be amazed how I trip over the same stuff over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, we'll talk repeatedly in a variety of different ways. With I'll do this with different co-hosts on the show. We'll talk about how important it is to not go into the negative about somebody, to hold them in the most positive light, and so forth, and 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 to just you know send as much love as you can and that kind of thing. And then I'll go back to my regular life and I'll find myself doing the diametric opposite of that. And I'll say, yeah. what are you doing, Walt? What on earth are you doing? You're talking mm. about this every single day and you're not putting it to practice. What are you doing? Yes. <laughs> and oh, that yeah. sort of comes back to Alex's point. It's, it's sometimes it's about trauma that's, uh, that's just never been processed. And we go back to the same routine because our feeling body is programmed in that direction and right no matter how hard we think otherwise we end up acting a certain way mm -hmm. so i think we're down to our last minute here we are and i haven't got the messages and so i'll say them really briefly if you're not a subscriber what are you doing subscribe come on join the party <laughs> we got a lot of people here and they're, they're they're growing in numbers every day and you get so much benefit out of listening to all the episodes every week and once you're a subscriber please do share the fact that you're doing so on social media because that's how other people find out about it and that's the short version tom how does somebody reach out to you in case they need a little personal help because you're a life coach and you're good at it so how do they reach you they can go to my website which is urjoy.com and they can sign up for a free half hour coaching there with me all right and alex uh, i i know you've been working on stuff are, do you have any events coming up that are of interest to people or are you just still the homebody for a while or what's going on still the homebody but my uh podcast just got picked up on spotify so i'm excited about that whoa yeah right. congratulations <laughs> fantastic thank you <laughs> so we can look forward to more of that more good stuff from you coming in through spotify that's great yep all right well you guys have a great weekend and we'll be talking next yeah week you too both. all right all and right. we will see you all listeners as well next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.